And then there were four. Championship game, San Francisco at Philadelphia and Bengals at the Chiefs. In this edition of the Power Rankings, we'll also offer one reason as to why each team will and won't win the Super Bowl. So, let's get right into it. Number 4. Cincinnati Bengals Last time's ranking, 5. Why they can win it all? their lockdown defense. The Bengals' main strength is their passing game, no doubt. Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, and Joe Mixon have been too much for opposing defenses to overcome, even for that stingy Buffalo Bills unit. But make no mistake, it's Lou Anarumo's defense that has led Cincy to consecutive AFC Championship games. Anarumo has owned Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs with his rush three drop eight into coverage schemes. Those same schemes proved to be too much for Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills, who mustered just 10 points in Sunday's divisional round two. The Bengals aren't loaded with Pro Bowl caliber talents, but every player knows their role. And they excel in it. Since his defense played well enough to make it to Super Bowl 56 a year ago, they learned from that heartbreak and are well equipped for any challenge now. If they can limit Mahomes and Josh Allen on the road in a playoff game, they can stop anyone. The Cincy offense doesn't have to be lights out for this team to have a chance. We've seen them start off sluggish in the first half several times over the last two seasons, then the defense makes plays to keep them in it before Burrow and company finally get to work. Defense wins championships, and the Bengals have it right now. Why they won't win it all. The leaky offensive line. The Bengals signed Alex Kappa, Lael Collins, and Ted Karras last offseason to repair the offensive line. There was considerable improvement from the unit in the regular season, but the injuries have quickly piled up there. Collins is done for the year as he recovers from a torn ACL. Kappa missed the divisional round with an ankle injury. Offensive tackle Jonah Williams was also inactive with a knee injury. And now the Bengals have to hold up against Steve Spagnuolo's blitz-happy Kansas City defense, headlined by superstar defensive tackle Chris Jones, who had 15.5 sacks in the regular season. Burrow was sacked seven times in the Super Bowl loss to the Rams. He's taken five sacks for the Bengals' first two playoff games, which isn't all that bad. He may have the best set of weapons in football right now, but that doesn't matter if Joe Cool 2.0 doesn't have time to throw. Even if since you were to get past Kansas City, can you really trust that O-line to hold up against the Philadelphia Eagles front seven that recorded 70 sacks in the regular season, or against Nick Bosa and the resilient San Francisco 49ers unit? The O-line ultimately cost the Bengals in their Super Bowl loss last year. Don't be surprised if history repeats itself. Number 3. Kansas City Chiefs Last time's ranking, 4. Why they can win it all, the passing game. There isn't much that really needs to be said on this entry that hasn't already been said. Patrick Mahomes, who has led Kansas City to its fifth straight AFC Championship game appearance, at Arrowhead no less, will soon take home his second MVP award. Mahomes fought through a visibly painful ankle injury in the Chiefs' divisional round victory over the Jacksonville Jaguars. He once again made a plethora of highlight reel throws, and the Jaguars' defense never stood a chance. Though he's lost all three meetings to Burroughs' Bengals, it's unfair to put the blame on number 15. He had 259 passing yards and two touchdowns in the Week 17 loss last year, followed by 275 passing yards and three passing touchdowns in the AFC Championship game. And in the Chiefs' Week 13 loss to Cincy this year, Mahomes had 223 yards on just 16 completions, along with one passing touchdown and one rushing score. Anaruma's defense has caused Mahomes more problems than we're accustomed to seeing. But a guy like Mahomes? Well, you can only trick him so many times before he cracks the code and drops the hammer on your defense. The Chiefs' rushing game is meh, and their defense is pretty decent, but when you have the game's best quarterback, the game's best tight end, along with the likes of Juju Smith-Schuster, Kadarius Tony, Sky Moore, and Marquez Valdez-Scantling, well, you'll always have a shot at the Super Bowl. Kansas City's Super Bowl dreams once again come down to the passing game, and as we've seen many times, it's all they really need to have a chance. Why they won't win it all the pass defense. If you look at the Chiefs' first three playoff losses at home, there's one common denominator, the leaky secondary. As you'll recall, the defense did absolutely nothing against Tom Brady and the New England Patriots in the 2018 AFC Championship game. 
And though the duct taped O-line got a lot of the hate in the Super Bowl 55 blowout loss to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, let's not forget that the defense got no stops in the first half and kept taking careless penalties that put Mahomes in a bind that he just could not get out of. And in their playoff loss to Cincy a year ago, the defense did nothing in the second half or overtime, plain and simple. Kansas City just doesn't have the personnel to match up with the opposition's top receivers. They live and die by the front seven, and if you can hold the pass rush off, you're gonna have your way with this defense. Even if the Chiefs find a way to finally solve Burrow and company, do you trust them to do it two games in a row when they face the Eagles or Niners in the Super Bowl? Let's just say it would be very impressive if Steve Spagnuolo got this defense to rise up and win a championship given the lack of playmakers in that secondary. Number 2. Philadelphia Eagles Last time's ranking? 2. Why they can win it all. Balance. The Eagles finished with the best regular season record at 14-3, and, and it's all thanks to a roster that has zero real weaknesses. How would we describe this star-studded roster in one word? How about balance? Let's start off with the offense, which was third in scoring in the regular season, led by ageless wonders Lane Johnson and Jason Kelsey. The Eagles have the NFL's best offensive line. Miles Sanders rushed for over 1,200 yards in the regular season. Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown both easily surpassed 1,000 receiving yards. Dallas Goddard would have likely gotten there too if he didn't miss five games. That is a lot of star power, and we haven't even gotten to the defensive side of the ball yet. Phillies D finished with 70 sacks, too shy of the single season record. They were number one against the pass, second in total yards allowed, and eighth in scoring defense. And they finished in a third place tie for takeaways with 27. If the offense has a bad day, the defense can win the game and vice versa. The Eagles have no legitimate roster weaknesses, and they only lost one game all season with Jalen Hurts as a starter. In other words, it takes practically a perfect game to beat them. There is a case to be made that this roster is considerably better than the 2017 squad that won the franchise's first Super Bowl with backup QB Nick Foles. If the Eagles could power their way through the regular season and divisional round with this roster, why can't they win two more games to take home the Super Bowl? Why they won't win it all. The run defense. We're nitpicking a little bit here, but if there is one area of concern for the Eagles, it's the run D, especially considering their opponent for this Sunday. The Eagles allowed 121.6 rushing yards per game in the regular season, tied for the 16th most. And though they made easy work of the New York Giants in the divisional round, the group did allow 118 rushing yards on only 20 carries. The 49ers have the perfect formula for beating the Eagles, clock-melting drives that wear out the defense and keep that high-powered Philly offense on the sidelines. Plus, running the ball a lot limits the Eagles' opportunity opportunities to take over the game in the pass rushing department. San Francisco has a game-changing running back in Christian McCaffrey, along with wingback Debo Samuel and backup rusher Elijah Mitchell. And Kyle Juszczyk is capable of busting off some big plays when the occasion calls for it too. There is no simple way of beating a near-flawless team like the Eagles. But if there is one area to exploit, it's unquestionably their run defense, which has struggled considerably against top-notch running backs this year. Number 1. San Francisco 49ers Last time's ranking, 1. Why they can win it all all the offensive weapons. It is no coincidence that including the playoffs, the 49ers are 12-1 with Christian McCaffrey in the lineup. Run CMC has taken this already potent offense to a whole new level to the point where it's really pick your poison with this group. McCaffrey remains a game wrecker both as a rusher and as a receiver. George Kittle is a top 5 tight end in the league. Samuel and 1000 yard wideout Brandon Ayuk are among the NFL's elite receiving duos. It is no wonder that Kyle Shanahan was able to win with Trey Lance and then with Jimmy Garoppolo and now with Brock Purdy. The offensive line is as good as ever with the ageless rock star Trent Williams and the vastly underrated Mike McGlinchey leading the way. If there is an O-line that can hold up against either of the Eagles, Chiefs, or Bengals front sevens, it's this 49ers group. Add it all up, and there are plenty of ways for this Niners offense to exploit their opposition. And with a mastermind like Kyle Shanahan orchestrating it all, it's only a matter of time before he figures out which way is the best why they won't win it all. Holes in the secondary. The 49ers had the league's number one scoring defense and the league's number one total defense. Surprisingly, however, they actually ranked just 20th against the pass in the regular season. San Fran shut down Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys offense in the divisional round, for the most part. But they didn't have an answer for C.D. Lamb, who got 10 passes for 117 yards in the loss. A week earlier, D.K. Metcalf went off on the 49ers' D, hauling in 10 receptions for 136 yards 
yards and two touchdowns. So there is a weakness that the Eagles can exploit. Traverius and Jimmy Ward have been mostly stellar in coverage this season, but it's rather simple to pick on the 49ers other defensive backs. You can't run on this D, and it's hard to fully contain their pass rush, but by drawing up screens, quick throws, and passes over the middle, teams can exploit this 49ers secondary. Much like how the Chiefs did back in Week 8 when they humiliated San Fran 44-23. The 49ers will have their hands full trying to contain Sanders, Goddard, Brown, and Smith on Sunday. And if they get to the Super Bowl, will they find ways to slow down the Bengals or Chiefs' wealth of weapons? San Fran's defense broke down in the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl 54 loss to Kansas City. After three excellent Excellent quarters in the NFC Championship game against the Rams last year, the secondary also broke down and let Cooper Cup take over the game on his own. You can argue that the 49ers have the best all-around team among the Final Four, but the NFL is a pass-happy league. If their secondary can't hold down the fort against top-flight offenses, then the Niners faithful better brace themselves for another heartbreaking playoff loss. But who do you think wins the NFC and AFC Championship games? Let us know in the comment section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.